gotta admit, it's surprising for you to come to me out of the blue like this. That's not how we usually collab these days. Yeah, I know, but I think this needed my attention. But why Lackadaisy? Have you even read the comic? No, but I saw Riser's review of it a while back and it looked interesting. Plus, this is the first time I can talk about an animated pilot without having questions. Gentlemen, this is all very interesting. But this ain't a sewing circle! Come on, the lackadaisy is a speakeasy. It's called theming. Get out of here before I have clearance throw you out. Okay, okay, we're going. Dang, who knew Azeroth needed filming permits? So, aside from it being popular right now, Hero, why did you want to review this so much? Well, I had a few reasons. Back in the day when TV was the most popular way people got their content, the most that a hopeful young creator could ask for was to have their show make it to TV. A lot of shows fell by the wayside, but if you were lucky, the pilot for your show would air on a package show like What a Cartoon or Oh Yeah Cartoons. Sometimes this would lead to your show getting picked up. It worked for every cartoon cartoon and Nicktoons like Fairly Odd Parents, Chalk Zone, and My Life as a Teenage Robot. Or sometimes the pilot would air elsewhere as a one-off, like as a segment on a show like Kablam, or be dumped onto VHS as a curiosity, like Legend of the Hawaiian Slammers. Is this history lesson going to take long? Shut up, it's important. When the internet became a thing, creators found out that posting your content directly online was a good way to get eyes on your product without the censorship or rejection of a network. Obviously, they weren't the first to do this, but Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel are probably the two that people think of these days. People have asked me if I'm going to cover those, and I'm honestly not sure if I can. I know my friends have watched them, but given the questionable nature of some of the people behind them, I couldn't in good conscience make myself watch them. Weren't those rumors disproven? I think so, but I'm still a bit conflicted. One of these days I'm gonna cave and watch them both for myself, but it's still a long way off. In the meantime, I thought it'd be fun to talk about a pilot that looks fun and where I don't have questions about the creators. Lackadaisy fits the bill and the internet seems to like it, and despite not being familiar with the comic, I was still interested. You do know that saying stuff like that is just asking for there to be a scandal with one of the creators later on, right? I'm trying not to think about that, but yes. Look, Isaac, I know you have a lot of scripts to work on, but this is a short subject with an interesting art style starring a bunch of cat characters. Alright, but you owe me one. This is the Lackadaisy pilot. It's Prohibition era St. Louis, and the curtain of our show opens on... This guy, who's fiddling on the railroad tracks. Wait, a cat on a railroad track? Get out of here! Except you. You can stay. Thankfully, this cat, Rocky, is not of the horribly rendered CGI variety. He's just waxing poetic about the Mississippi, which he's walking over. What a gust vitality in your wide aorta stream. You must have had to oversee alchemic change of timber beam to iron brick and engine steam. Dude, I have no idea what you're saying, but it sounds cool. Well, he is voiced by Angel Dust's voice actor, Michael Kovac. I know you like him, at least. Touché. I should mention that unlike the earlier strips of the comic, which were sepia-toned, this pilot is in full color. But Rocky's not alone. He's there with two other cats, Ivy and Freckle, who appear to be... grave robbing? Uh, no encore? It's no, fine. no, that's plenty. We're fine. Should I uh, add a, a dance? Extra stanzas? <laughs> There's more where that came from. Please don't ruin musical theater for everyone. Again, I think Cat's already dead. Ivy and Freckle ask Rocky for some help, but he makes some excuse and ends up falling down the bank. I provide the up! 
I do love the little touches in the animation here. You can occasionally see the sketch lines on the characters' faces, but I love how the violin slides down before Rocky, or how his hat lands on Freckle perfectly. Also, I should mention that Ivy and Freckle are voiced respectively by Lisa Raymold, who was Kurumi in Licorice Recoil, and Perla Pucci in Jojo Part 6, and by Belshaber Rusape. I am very sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly, who was ending in My Hero. He also played Freckle in Lackadaisy comic dubs, and I'm pretty sure that's how he was cast. The three of them finally find what they were looking for, thanks to a coded message Rocky got from the obituary. It's also obvious that Freckle doesn't want to be here, especially since he's got an overprotective mom who wouldn't approve but he went partially because he wants to impress Ivy. They reach the truck to offload their ill-gotten bounty, illegal Canadian whiskey. But just as they're about to leave, they get attacked by another group of gangsters. Excuse me! <laughs> Look like we got some live ones tonight. <laughs> yeah, c'est bon. Ah, <laughs> the French. That's Serafina, voiced by Benny Latham. She hasn't done a lot yet, but she started out her voice acting career on some pretty big reboots like Transformers Earthspark and Spidey and His Amazing Friends. The other, Nicodem, is also voiced by Malcolm Ray from... That series we don't talk about these days. Anyway, they're led by this guy, Mordecai, voiced by Song Won Cho, and the three of them start chasing our... Heroes, I guess? Did we mention that Ivy can't really drive? Didn't? Learn to drive! Well, you're so bad at it, you've confounded the enemy! Also, as in the comics, shy little Freckle has another side to him. If you put a machine gun in his hands, he goes full-on crazy racketeer. Mordecai seems to have some sort of connection to them, as his goons mention something about old times, which gets revealed in the comic. But I won't spoil that in case you haven't read it yet. But that connection doesn't stop Freckle from shooting out their tire or Mordecai from trying to shoot them. It doesn't work, and they end up crashing into a stone quarry instead. But despite their truck being disabled, Rocky rolls with it. He turns on the lights and finds a steam shovel just as the bad guys enter the quarry after them. Okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, as someone who's read the comics, Rocky is kind of insane. Oh, so he's in good company then. Anyway, while Rocky's off to do whatever he's planning, Ivy starts trying to fix the truck. As the bad guys start closing in, Freckle takes a smaller pistol and goes out to try and hold them off. Apparently, small guns don't trigger his gun madness. He almost gets the drop on Mordecai, but when the other two corner Ivy, he ends up emptying his clip trying to stop them. It looks like they're all done for until Rocky the Crazy Guy starts throwing dynamite around. <laughs> what the hell is this? Child, this is a living eyes are stupid. The sudden circus comes to town! <laughs> what? The two thugs are forced to take cover, which gives Freckle a chance to save Ivy. But however Rocky's driving that steam shovel, maybe he jammed the steering stick in place or something, it stops when one of his dynamite sticks falls back into the bucket, forcing him to retreat, and he ends up blowing up the nearby water tower. Ivy gets the truck working again just in time for them to pick up their would-be boss on the way out. Mordecai has them in his sights again, but hesitates, possibly because of that connection I mentioned earlier. We cut to the Little Daisy Cafe, where we're introduced to a new character, Mitzi May, voiced by Ash Wagner, who also voiced her in comic dubs. She's talking to what's later revealed to be her late husband, Atlas, reminiscing about how things used to be so much better before she lost him. But she was able to arrange the funeral home to be her new supplier. Yeah, as we mentioned before, the Little Daisy is only a cover for the Lackadaisy Speakeasy. A speakeasy was a secret bar that people could go to during the Prohibition era to get booze without the cops finding out. People like Sedgwick Alistair Sable here. Or just Wick to his friends. He's voiced by Bradley Gareth, who's been in a lot of web original series, including Death Battle as Hal Jordan, Yandir Simulator, and the Percy Jackson audio drama. Wait, time out. There was a Percy Jackson audio drama? Yes. Why? Sorry, I'm a little obsessed with the Riordan verse. 
Anyway, he's recently made the transition to official anime dubs, like voicing Tatsudo in Tribe 9, and the Eternity Devil in Chainsaw Man. Well, he was one of its voices. But before that, he played Wick in Lagadaisy comic dubs as well. It's pretty cool that this series would cast so many people who portrayed the characters in dubs of the comic already. And it makes sense. This way the creators already know if the voice they gave the character sounds like the one they wanted to use for their official voice. Wick is one of the few patrons they have after making the transition to a speakeasy, as well as the stage musician Zib, voiced by Valentine Stokes, who was also Ace in Death Battle and Yutaka in Tribe 9, in addition to playing Zib in the comics. There's also the bartender, Victor, and despite not speaking much, he's played by the actor with by far the most roles, Jason Marnocha. He's voiced in a lot of abridged series, but was also the voice of Keicho Nijimura in Jojo, the Demon King in Seven Deadly Sins, and Charlotte Oven in One Piece. Just at that moment, the others arrive with the whiskey. But despite them getting away with a few bottles, the collateral damage was much worse. Heh. <laughs> I like how Freckle does cat trolls when he's upset, and how JJ, the other stage musician, is playing the sad trombone and taps for gags in the background. But despite how little of a profit they ended up making, our heroes decide to celebrate with some music. And we end on a bittersweet note as Mitzi imagines her husband watching with her and sees the lackadaisy hopping with customers as it was during its prime. But there's a post credit scene in which Mordecai calls up his boss, a lion named Asa Sweet, also voiced by Marnocha, to report that the funeral home has been double dealing to Lackadaisy. With how clumsy they are, they'll end up attracting more attention from the feds, so we truly end on Asa sending his thugs to destroy the Lackadaisy. Well, it was a sudden request, but I'm glad you asked for this hero. Yeah, Lackadaisy had a pretty great pilot. As a fan of the comic, I can appreciate all the little touches that new fans wouldn't pick up on. And it's cool that the creators actually used fan casting to their advantage, something that a lot of modern dubs could learn from. And for a small team, the animation is fantastic. So many cool details on the movements and occasionally the art style as well. The voice cast would be pretty great for a professional piece, let alone something like this that was released directly online. But chances are most of you knew that already. I just wanted to talk about this while it was still sort of relevant because it caught my interest. Even as someone who doesn't have the spare time to do a lot of webcomic reading, I might start again because of this. Either way, I'm looking forward to more of this series. Well, that was nice. Sure better than the last thing we reviewed. Just as long as we don't end up finding out there's another animated Titanic series, that'd just be crazy. Right? Right? <laughs> Hey guys, I couldn't exactly fit this into the flow of the script very well, so I'll take this time to give a shout out to the one voice actor we couldn't mention who had speaking lines. Horatio the Doorman was voiced by the Realizer 367, aka Tomas Walter Vitola. He has even less speaking lines than Victor does in this short, and he's not known for voice acting in web series, but rather being an editor of them, including one for Lackadaisy comic dubs. He's literally only had one voice acting role besides this one, and that was as a nameless thug in How Your Ravity Plugs Her Patreon, a web short that served to celebrate the premiere of My Hero Academia Season 3. He does do a good job, and I did want to give him proper credit, but... Yeah, I think you can see why we didn't mention him in our summary. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking around to hear this part.